And now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. It's 8.07 on WMAL. This is where Washington comes to talk. You're listening to Mornings on the Mall with Brian and Larry. Uh, Steve Moore from Wall Street Journal is in today. Well, I like and that. Heritage. And Heritage Foundation. I keep forgetting Heritage and Foundation. And author of that best-selling book. Yes. Uh, Steve Moore in for Brian Wilson. Uh, his new book, yes, An Inquiry into the Nature of Causes of the Wealth of States. How Taxes, Energy, and Worker Freedom Will Change the Balance of Power Among States. And let's talk about that, actually, because this Keystone Pipeline decision. Right. It encompasses all of those things, it energy does. and workers' rights and, and all it of that. It goes through a lot of states. It's a lot of jobs. Ten, you know, we don't know exactly how many. I think the president says, what, 50? <laughs> yeah, he said but, uh, 50. It's closer to uh, you know, 10,000 when you include all of the, uh, you know, uh, the spinoff jobs. And by the way, these are union jobs, fifty to to $100,000 a year. And the president turns his, his nose up on this and says, this is the same president who says we need more infrastructure jobs. Of course. And, you know, when I heard this story, they, they threw this at me. Wait, I was I was on uh, Gretchen Carlson with Alan Combs. We do a Friday yeah, debate every day. By the way. That's Great nice job. of you to say. And they threw it, and the first thing that came to mind, remember this liberal billionaire, Tom Steyer yep. is his yep. name, and he announced two months ago, I'll, I'll read from the Politico article right now, uh, former hedge fund manager is hoping to spend $100 million to make climate change a top-tier right. issue in the election. $100 million. Where's that mm-hmm. money going to go? To Democrats running in, in 2014. And listen to this part of this uh, article. He spent millions in the 2013 Massachusetts Senate and Virginia governor's races, helping Democrats Ed Markey and Terry McCullough prevail, and has become one of the most outspoken opponents of the proposed Keystone yeah. XL oil pipeline. You know, I thought Charles Krauthammer had a great line on this, Larry, last week, where he was say- on Fox News, where he was saying, "Look, this is not just you know uh, denying jobs in the United States. It's really sticking a finger in the eye of, of our greatest ally, Canada." Canada, and, and, oh, and you absolutely. know, by the way. Even if you're, uh, you know, uh, an alarmist on global warming and you don't like fossil fuels, the truth is we know that that, that oil is going to be is going to be sold somewhere. It's just a question of whether it's going to flow through the United States and we're going to be able to use it here domestically. Let's bring Michael Steele to yeah. the table now, former lieutenant governor of Maryland, of course, and former RNC chairman and my morning buddy, Michael Steele. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. There. How you doing, man? I'm good. So when you heard this announcement on Friday, were you as disgusted and, and cynical as I was? Not only are they delaying it yet again, this decision on Keystone, but they have delayed it till after the midterm elections. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, the, the politics of this is, is gone from the sublime to the incredibly ridiculous. I mean, I think the president has begun to look a little bit uh, like a fool on this issue, to be honest about it, because... You've got Democrats, you've got Republicans. I mean, it's one of the one of the few issues in Washington where a general consensus right. has formed that, right. yes, we should move forward on this, that it is good for jobs, it's good for economic development, it's good, as, as Steve just pointed out, for our relations with our partners like Canada. Um, but more importantly, it begins to set into motion the idea, truly, of uh, American independence on oil. We can do this, not just in terms of you know, producing crude mm-hmm. oil or, or anything else, but this stuff, you know, everything uh, becomes much more focused as, a, as an energy discussion. Uh, and I think the president right now is listening to uh, the progressive base of his party. He's concerned about um, the turnout uh, in the midterm elections because that's the, the real driver here. If this issue is, is solved in, in favor of the pipeline, then that base is a little bit more demoralized. There's one more reason not to so, get out and support So, Michael, um, you, you've been the uh, the head of the RNC and did a fabulous job when you were there. So I want to ask you a, a political question. I, we were talking earlier this morning about this issue, and I made the point that this is a fabulous issue for Republicans to really win back the kind of Reagan Democrats, those blue-collar workers who voted for Obama uh, in the last election. The but now they're, would work on this yeah, line. Now they're seeing their jobs being being destroyed by these radical environmentalists who would want to deindustrialize America. Don't you think this is the kind of issue Republicans would really should really take to the mat and go to those blue collar unions and say, you know what, we're the ones who care about your jobs, not Barack Obama and these environmentalists. And Barbara Boxer. Absol- absolutely. I think it is a golden opportunity to to reformulate the conversation um, with a, a constituency that was once very supportive of Republicans. Right. Uh, those Reagan Democrats, the union households uh, and, and particularly given that the unions have come out and backed this issue. I mean, I, I, I sum this up very nicely, I think, in a piece I wrote for Grio that came out on Friday, Build, Baby, Build. That, <laughs> I mean, this is the right. type of thing 
that is good for the economy, it's good politically, and I just think the president is now toned up because he's too concerned about a turnout issue well, as opposed to turning up the economy. Michael Steele, you coined the phrase drill, baby, drill, if I remember right, back yep. in 2008. And so now you're, you're flipping it to build, baby, build. Let's see if it sticks. But uh, you have to respond now because the president, uh, in his usual way, he is dismissing you and he is mocking you and the claims you're making. Listen to this. This is from uh, last year. Yeah, they, they keep on talking about this. Uh, an oil pipeline coming down from Canada that's estimated to create about 50 permanent jobs. That's not a jobs plan. And now, of course, we know that he doesn't have a jobs plan, right. but uh, <laughs> that, right. tell, re, re, rebut this because I keep hearing it. Oh, most of those jobs are temporary. There's only going to be about 50 permanent jobs. That, that, that is just baloney. I mean, you're talking about a massive pipeline that's going to run from Canada to friggin'. Texas. It's 1,500 and, miles. Yeah. And only 50 people are going to build it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can, can, seriously? I mean, can, I mean, you just sit there. I mean, okay, so 50 permanent jobs. You, you're going to have 54, you know, poor little men and women sort of spread out across this massive pipeline to sort of manage this thing and uh, keep it up. And to keep it running, I mean, it is just so, it's just so ridiculous. It, it's bordering, I mean, and Steve Moore's here, and I, can, I mean, Steve Moore, it's bordering on economic illiteracy, is it not? It sure is. And, you know, I, I have to say, Michael, I'm sort of surprised. I was thinking that if I was the president and I was his political advisor, I'd say, let's have an October surprise. Yeah. Let's announce in October that we're going to build this pipeline. Because, as you know, this is one of those 80-20 issues. I mean, yeah. only the only the wackos are against, uh, you know, an infrastructure project that creates jobs, you know, produces more energy in the United States, makes us more energy, uh, you know, uh, independent. I mean, there's not really any argument against this. Right. And I, so, I absolutely agree with that. You know, I think, Steve, one of the things, uh, one of the triggers here uh, that I think is, is also kind of push the president away from the pipeline on this is, oddly enough, Obamacare. I think the recent, quote, success <laughs> of Obamacare numbers has given the president the kind of confidence or cockiness that he thinks he Do you think anyone really believes that Obamacare is a success? I mean, the polls still, still show only about 30% of Americans support Obamacare. But you heard the President crowing last week when they were announcing now 8 million, so I guess we're going to get like this, this weekly update yeah. on the number of people. But I believe that, he, that their thinking is that this is now going to be, if the Republicans want to play this card, let's play it. Bring Let's it on. Give them Bring it on. It's, right. it's, it's like the Jerry Lewis telethon. He goes to the tote board. We got, we got right. another 100,000. Uh, uh, lighty. Uh, uh, before I let you go. Of course, a lot of those people haven't even paid premiums, right? You know that. Right. <laughs> Michael Steele, I gotta, before I let you go, i got to ask you, because this weekend is the 2014 Maryland Republican Spring Convention, and yep. we are in primary season here for uh, statewide office. Making any endorsements there, uh, Lieutenant Governor? No, no. I, you know, I, I, I got too many friends running, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think all of the all of the folks who are you know certainly running for the governorship and uh, other offices are going to be. The Republicans on win the governorship in Maryland. I, I think we can. I, I really do. I think uh, there's a lot of momentum. I think uh, the health care issue in this state, yeah. the exchange, was a joke. <laughs> uh, it was one of the most mismanaged, unmanaged uh, uh, things in the country. Well, G Gansler is having trouble making it stick to Anthony Brown. Uh, did, will, will there be a chance for a Republican to make it stick? Well, it's a different conversation, you know, when when the Republicans are, are putting it out there. Yeah, because then people paying much more attention to the sort of the right-left uh, Republican-Democrat conversation. Uh, you know, look, the Repu I've run into Maryland's all over the place who are frustrated with this process. The question, and, and this is the one because I'm going to be speaking at the convention this, this Saturday, is can you translate that into votes? And it goes to what you were talking about at the beginning, Larry, on this issue uh, on the pipeline. How can Republicans bring those Democrats back to the conversation in a way that translates into support for candidates, Republican candidates this fall? And I think that there are ways to do that. Um, to point out what leadership is required, what, what principles apply, and what policies you're willing to put into place to make them get back to and, work and make it work. And them. after your rousing speech on Saturday, if there's a draft Michael Steele movement at the convention, you will... Have a beer. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Steele. Good. <laughs> 860, I'll have that beer with you.